In this video, let's work on this assignment. We're trying to supply a employee ID in the URL as part of the query string. And then we grab that and we make decision based on whether we have a employee ID or not. Let's go ahead and work on that. Jump back to Visual Studio here. And first of all, we need to get the employee ID from the query string. We already have some real logic in the delete method over here. So therefore, what we can do is we can copy and paste this logic under the get method. So if we have a employee ID over here, that means we're getting a particular employee information, right? Otherwise, we're getting all of the employees. So let's move this logic inside the curly braces over here and let's implement getting a particular employee. Since we have the comment over here, we add another comment here to distinguish them to get all of the employees full. And in order to get a particular employee, again, we're going to use the employees repository and we're going to say get employee by ID, specified employee ID. Now we don't have the method as I mentioned before. I usually like to use this type of coding habit. It's almost like test-driven development. You create something and then you see the red squiggly line and then you try to get rid of that red squiggly line. I need to implement this get employee ID because I know that red squiggly line here. So scroll down and go to employee repository over here. At the very top, this is where we implement our get methods can have our public static method and we're going to return get employee by ID and provide the ID right here and then try to return by using link. So employees first or default or X goes to add X dot ID equals ID. Now this could return something that doesn't exist. Therefore here we can add a question mark to get rid of the green squeak line. Now, we have our method implemented. We scroll up, scroll up to the top, and we have our get employee by ID. And we can say, now this employee, again, could be null. So if employee is not null, we don't have to use this. We can say is not null. I like to use this, which is clearer than the explanation mark followed by a equal sign. So if employee is not null, then we are going to work on it, right? We're going to work on displaying it. Otherwise, we are going to display a message. So we have something similar here, right? We can copy this, paste it here. So what's the status code should be? It should be 404, right? Because 404 is not found. I have something wrong with my keyboard. So let me fix that. 404, not found. And we can say, employee not found. If we found employee, then we can display the employee information. And the question is, in what format should we display it? We can display it in the HTML table we can display it in a, an order list. So for simplicity, I'm just going to display it in a regular HTML with line breaks. So I'm going to say, write async, and then I'm going to use string interpolation now here, I'm going to say name is employee.name. We can add a line break like this. Then we copy and paste it twice. And for the second one, we're going to show the position. And for the third one, we're going to show the salary. I'm going to change the label here. So position, that's it. Here, we don't have to do anything with the status code because that way it returns status code 200, which means everything is okay. All right, so that's the implementation. So here we have two endpoint handling logic here. One is this, the other one is. So the code is getting a lot more than we want to have to manage in one file. So it's best to break it down into you know, classes in order to organize the code. and we are going to have a lecture in the future about organizing logic. For now, we are okay with this format. Let's try to run the application to see whether we can get a particular employee information based on the ID. All right, so let's go to slash employees. This is gonna give us all of the employees. And let's try to get the first one, which is ID number one. ID number one is John Doe. 
John Doe is an engineer. So we have name John Doe, position engineer, salary is 60,000, and we have problems with this. So we are not actually showing HTML, we're also showing pure text. So before we go any further, we have to fix this problem. And in order to fix that, specify content type. And that has to be text HTML. This should fix our problem. Let's run it again. Let's go to employees ID number two. And we have Jane Smith, positions manager, salary is. And that's my implementation of this assignment. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.